Hi guys, welcome back uh, to my dark room here um, and another episode of uh, my YouTube channel. I'm John McTaggart and I uh, thank you guys for tuning in uh, for this video as well as all the other ones that I've made. It's really kind of uh, flattering and very cool. All the comments and the likes and the subscribers and all that, I'm really honored. I uh, hope I can help you out, um, become a better photographer and, and more importantly, hope you can uh, enjoy it more. That's really what this is all about is having fun with photography and learning a few things along the way as well. Well today we are actually going to talk about this little guy here. Um, it's Fuji's 50 millimeter f2 lens, the weather resistant one, the WR version. I've had it now for I think about two weeks, maybe three weeks, two, three weeks now. And um, you know when I bought it, I, I, I actually got it initially because after the 35 f2 i really didn't have anything longer than that uh, focal length wise um, i had had a 90 in the past but i didn't like that it was kind of i didn't i wasn't really thrilled with it it was kind of big and, and clunky i mean it's beautiful pictures it took great image quality all that kind of stuff but it was just a little too clunky for what i have this camera system for which is it to make it kind of small and lightweight and a little bit stealthy so i ordered this uh, with high expectations and um, it, it, and even higher um, ideas of what I wanted to do with it. So, but I have to tell you, it is a funky focal length. If you're used to shooting with a DSLR, um, this is basically a 75 millimeter equivalent, which is a little bit weird. A lot of portrait guys use 85, which has actually become kind of the standard portrait lens now. It used to be a shorter tele. tele. Uh, that's not the case now. Uh, 85 is, is pretty standard now for a lot of uh, professional portrait photographers. I even know some photojournalists that carry 85 and an 18 or you know, 28 and an 85, and that's pretty much their, their kit. Um, so I wouldn't know what to expect. I know Leica made a, made a uh, 75 millimeter um, for some of their setup for their cameras at one point in time. I don't know when that was and nor have I ever tried it. Um, but I got to tell you, I really like it. Um, it it's it's a, a far enough reach for me to be far enough away um, and not feel like I'm running on top of somebody or, and still get a great shot. Yet it's not so close that I'm, I can see every pore in their face. It's really a nice focal length, I think, for what I need. And actually, I've actually used it for a few portraits as well of my dogs in particular. Um, and it's great. It's a beautiful lens. It is like the other, uh, in, the, in this series of lenses, the F2 lenses, the newer ones, the, the 35, what is it, 23, the 35, and this one now, they're very fast. The, sh the focus is super fast. It's really sharp lens. It is. It acquires focus fast. I've actually used it on my X-T1 uh, as much as I've used it on my X-Pro1. In fact, maybe even a little bit more. Um, it looks beautiful on that. It, it fits in nice and it is a zippy little lens. I would recommend this completely um, to anyone, really no matter what kind of photography you do short of, uh, you know, fast action sports. But if you're a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer even and you, you want that that focal length that's sort of not too far but not too close this is this is right in that sweet spot here I highly recommend it um, but but more importantly what I love about this lens is and really about all the f2 lenses that Fuji has even the 18 which is a much older one and, and one that a lot of people want to see uh, in the next series or the, or the next lens in this series this new weather resistant f2 is either an 18 or a 16 or something in the, a little bit of the wider end which i i wouldn't argue with them at all i think that'd be a great idea a great direction for fuji to go but what i love about this is it's a no thinker and to me what appeals most to me about the whole system here um this is in my expert one or i mean sorry my xt1 what i love about the whole system here is you can just shoot there's not a lot of thought that goes in it which i love it's more reactive and instinctual i love that about these cameras and that to me is what kind of photography should be about it's it's about feeling the moment or reacting to the moment and having a camera that's ready and a lens set up that's ready to handle that to me these are great i mean you 
you can really have any camera system you want, any lens setup you want, and the fact of the matter is, is you have to know that this is the picture, that this is the image you want, that this is what you want to capture. Um, my Fuji gear allows me to do that easier than some of the other stuff. A lot of it has to do with the size, uh, the stealthiness of it. I'm more of a documentary kind of guy, so I really kind of want to take pictures of life happening. But even portrait guys, big cameras can be intimidating, even to models. You get these guys, and this, this lens in particular, I'm telling you, you're going to love it. The 50 F2 is a dynamite piece of glass um, in, in a, what's becoming an increasingly growing line of dynamite pieces of glass for Fuji. To me, um, the this 23-35-50 combo that they've kind of come up with here, I really think it's going to be sort of like the standard for Fuji now. The rest of the lenses are going to be compared to these, these three lines. Um, Take Keo, Big Ken Taco, which I highly recommend checking out his blog and his YouTube channel is amazing. He kind of referred to these as Fujicrons because of Leica has their Sumacron line of lenses that are just amazing and they're all the same speed. So uh, uh, F2, len or, uh, yeah, F2 lenses. So th this is the similar vein that Fuji, or similar direct direction that Fuji's going here. And I'm telling you, as a photographer, as a Leica fan, as an incredible Fuji fan on the digital side of it, I couldn't be happier about this. It's got me looking forward to the next one in the series. And you know what the cool part about it too? They're cheap, um, relatively speaking, to what other lenses, especially with this kind of these fast lenses would be for a Canon setup or a Nikon setup even, or even Sony can get kind of expensive. Um, I think I paid $449 for this one, new, brand new. Yeah, $449 US dollars. Um, and that was actually one of the more expensive ones in the lineup here. So in theory, you could get yourself an X-Pro one for $400. The 35, I think, is 400. The 35 F2 is 399. You can get them all this stuff cheaper used. Um, in 18, you can pick up pretty cheap now. An 18 F2 and this 50 as well. And you have an entire kit for the most part for what under a thousand dollars, right around a thousand US dollars, which is insane. I mean, some of the bodies alone. My 70 to 200 for Canon cost me almost two thousand dollars alone. So, you know, there's nothing to complain about here. This is, you know, it's just dynamite stuff. And what it does is it just makes photography fun again. It's, the pressure is off in a sense. So you just, you can, you can control this camera on the fly if you do have to make changes. But for the most part, it takes a great picture. So, you know, with, with it lets you think yourself through, um, the camera set up and then you leave it alone and then you have to think of all for the most part when you're taking your pictures and, and you know it sounds kind of silly but the reality of it is is that the best pictures are taken in my mind when there when there isn't a lot of thought or planning that goes into it. it it's life happening and to me that's beautiful and those make the best pictures by far and this lens this 50 f2 along with several other ones in the fuji lineup in fact most of the other ones in the fuji lineup allow me to do that I point the camera in the right direction. I've already worked out the settings ahead of time in my head and then translated that onto the camera body itself. And it's a very easy camera system to set up. And then I point it, it grabs focus, and it shoots the photo. And that's it. And there is a beauty to that simplicity. So this camera, or this lens, is a bit of a freak in the focal length um, and the. And, and, and so. I mean, you know, you, you'd have thought that they might have come up with, with a, maybe another 56 and F2 version of the 56. When the 56 is nice, a very nice lens, very expensive, very nice lens. But instead, they sort of peeled it back a little bit to get in that 75 millimeter range. And I think it was a great decision. In hindsight, I really think they knew what they were doing. Um, and once again, this is another home run for Fuji this lens and uh, I would really recommend you getting it. So I'm going to put a few pictures after uh, this video that were taken with this picture. In fact, most of them were taken with this this combo right here, this setup right here. Um, I took some actually at the veterinary clinic, just a few there to give you an idea of what the bokeh was like and as well as what it can do. Um, so I hope you enjoy them and um, I will be back with another video 
and I, I, I thank you guys once again for all your support and all your help and all the comments. And if you like what we're doing here, make sure you subscribe and don't be afraid to leave a comment with an idea or a show topic or anything that you want or a video topic, whatever you want to see. Um, and thank you guys once again. See ya.